Access control list. Hello. In this video, I'll be talking about access control list. We're going to see what access control lists are, how we can create them, uh, what do we use them for, and how, the, how they're useful in our network, what are different types of access control lists, and how we can uh, monitor them, verify them, and where we, do, uh, where we apply them. Uh, for this purpose, uh, first I'm going to go through the concept and then after that uh, I have created a topology and I'm going to walk you through that topology and show you how you can configure this access control list and uh, how you can verify them. So first, what are access control lists? Basically, ACLs are list of conditions. So when I say a list, in this list you, ha in this list, you have a uh, a set of rules and conditions. So in these rules you'll decide what type of traffic is allowed to go into your network and what type of traffic is allowed to go out of your network. Now where do you, where do, where do you put this list and where you configure this list? Obviously on your routers. So if you have a router in your network you go to that router you configure you create a list of allowed uh, allowed and disallowed in your network, meaning what traffic can go in, what traffic can go out. And then you put it on the network, uh, on the router. And then this router will control all these accesses to different uh, services on your system and controls different traffics in your network. Now, how, how a router can control this access, meaning uh, when I say traffic and the router looks at the conditions. Basically, routers look at the source IP address and destination IP address of a packet. Then based on that, they decide. Of course, there are a lot of other things that routers will look at, like uh, source port, destination port, and layer fifth of uh, uh, TCP IP, uh, uh, sorry, OSI reference model. Uh, meaning uh, checking uh, if the connection is established or not. All these things, I'll talk about them later, but for now, I'm going to talk about uh, basic uh, or standard access uh, control list. Now, when we say routers control traffic uh, based on source IP address and destination IP address, now, if you look at this OSI reference model, in network layer, we have IP addresses. So basic access control lists work based on layer 3 of OSI reference model. Now when I say I have packet here, if you look at the structure of a packet, you see that here I have the full packet, the whole packet. Part of this packet is header and part of that is data. Now if we go in more detail in this header of the packet, you'll see that there are a lot of different fields here. But the most important one for us is source IP address and destination IP address. So my router looks at the source and destination IP address of a packet. Then it looks at the list and condition that I've created. And if it can find a match with uh, the condition that I've created and the packet that it has, then it applies that rule to that uh, packet. Now, what are different types of ACLs that we have? We have standard ACL and we have extended ACL. So in this video, I'll talk about standard ACL. And the next video, we'll cover extended access, uh, ACL. Now, what is standard ACL? Standard ACL works based on a source IP address, meaning it works at layer 3. Then, when it receives a packet, it looks at just source of the IP address and not the destination. So you see how basic and how primitive is this access list. It just looks at the source of IP address, then it decides that based on the rules that I've created, it decides that the packet is allowed to go in or is not allowed to go in. So in here I've got uh, the router that I create this uh, access control list on it. Here you have a standard access control list and this is the router. Now imagine that this packet comes in to the router. This is uh, the small version of the pa that packet that I showed you in here. Uh, look, that one is the small version of this packet. Now when this packet re uh, 
comes to this router and this router receives this packet, it looks at the uh, standard ACL that it has, list of the rules that it has, because it needs to check that do I have to permit or do I have to deny this address. So it looks at this list and checks if the source address of this packet matches with the address that it has in standard access list. If it finds a match, then it applies this access list on this packet, meaning based on that rule, it permits or denies the packet to go into uh, your network or go out of your network. Now, how to identify, how to create these different access lists? How do I know that the access list that I create is standard one and not the extended one? Uh, that's very easy. If you look at this table, you see that if you want to create a standard access list, the number that you use is between 1 to 99, uh, 99 or the extended version of that is between uh, 1300 to uh, 1999. Now, I'll talk about these numbers later when uh, we go through our scenario and uh, we want to configure the access control list. But for now, you see that standard access control list has a number between 1 to 99. I do want to talk about a uh, concept a lot here. It's better to go to the uh, our topology, configure our topology, and see how access uh, how we can create them. And while I'm creating them and working with access control list, I'll explain more about them. So here is the scenario that I have. We've got two routers here, router 1 and router 2. I have uh, a network here. This is my LAN that you see here. I have one network here. Uh, there is another network here between these two routers. And the third network is here. Now, what we're going to do, we want to control our traffic from this network to this network. So here I've created a very simple scenario. In this network, I'm going to allow PC1 to reach server uh, uh, www.cbtv.com, meaning the server. And I'm going to deny everyone else in this subnet, meaning this subnet, to reach here. So uh, it's not a good idea to deny these people to reach this server. In reality, don't do that. But uh, for our scenario, it's fine and we're going to do this. So here I've got this network 150.100.10.0. Here our network is 192.168.1.0 and here our network between these two routers is 200.100.10.0. For the configuration for this purpose I'm going to use GNS3. So uh, this topology might not be exactly the same in GNS3, so I just bring up my GNS3 and show you how the topology is there. So, one more time, our objectives. Allow PC1, meaning this PC, to go through all these routers and reaches server cbtv.com. And I'm going to block anyone else in this network to reach this server, meaning all these other computers are blocked from getting access to here. They are blocked. So let's configure this and see how everything works. All right. This is the topology that I've created in GNS3. It's somehow similar to the previous topology that you see here. I have the two routers, two switches. But instead of these computers that I had, uh, instead of these computers that I had in uh, uh, this topology that you see here, instead of these computers, I used three routers. Now this router represents my PC one, and these routers represent other PCs in my network. Because GNS3 doesn't have computer, or if you want to bring in a computer, as I have done it here. If you want to bring in a computer, you have to uh, run so many virtual machines at the same time that it's a lot of resources from your system. So it's better to use routers and uh, look at them as PCs. Here's my router one, router two, and 
this guy here is uh, the server that I had, meaning cbtv.com server. So now this cloud here represents that server. Here in this cloud, I have this. Uh, I have connected this cloud to a virtual machine. Uh, in previous videos, I have explained to you how to connect your virtual machine to uh, GNS3. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, go and watch that video so you know how, then you learn how to do that. Now, this computer, uh, this virtual machine is already connected to uh, this uh, switch and the whole topology is up. But I haven't configured uh, anything, so I'm going to go through everything and configure uh, everything that we have one by one. Just one minor changes that, uh, that I have done here. The network that I have here is 192, uh, just one more dot is extra here, 192.168.2.0. Uh, if you remember, I said the network here is 150.100.10.0. So I just uh, I just changed this address. Uh, so instead of this address, I'm going to write, uh, where can I write here? 192.168.2.0 slash 24 this is the new network address that I'm gonna use uh, if you don't know about this slash notation this is exactly your subnet mask Here, 24 represents all the ones that you have in your subnet mask so if you convert this uh, to the uh, dotted decimal version of subnet mask you will get 255 dot 255 dot 255 dot 0 meaning 24 ones so let's go to GNS3 and uh, run router 1 and configure these IP addresses for router 1 so uh, here is router 1 uh, I'm in privilege mode, the global configurations. We go to interface, uh, and here interface serial 0 slash 0 is connected to interface serial 0 slash 0 of router 2. So I need to go to interface serial 0 slash 0. Then we type IP address is 200.100.10.1 subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 and no shut down to bring up our line. So this is for router 1 serial interface. We have another interface which is fast Ethernet interface uh, that has gone to 192.168.1.0 network. So after this I go to interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 if you don't know which interface is connected to what you can just uh, check it here in topology summary you see router 1 has fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 that is connected to that switch and serial 0 slash 0 so fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 goes to this network meaning the IP address will be 192.168.1.1255255255.0 and no shutdown to bring the line up. So we're done with router 1 for now. I go to PC1 to assign uh, the IP addresses uh, for PC1 uh, to this uh, interface of uh, PC1. Here, uh, if you look at topology summary, PC1 has fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. 